Hello everyone and welcome back to the Crafty Decor Adventure. Olivia with Little Views from Mantic Home. Hey, welcome if you all are new. In today's video, I am so excited to share with you some DIY Dollar Tree 4th of July or Patriotic Decor Crafts. This is actually going to be a binge worthy compilation video of all of the 4th of July DIY decor crafts that I have ever done. I know you guys are going to love it and even if you don't decorate for the 4th of July or Patriotic Holidays, there's going to be so many ideas that you all can take and use and change up the paint colors, the flowers and the ribbons or whatnot, and just use them to doll up your house for summer. So without further ado, let's go ahead and plug in those glue guns, get out your glitter and paint, and let's get to crafting. I decided to take one of these Dollar Tree tall candles and some Dollar Tree poster board letters. They're already sticky, so all you have to do is peel them off, and we're going to create a USA candle. So this is such an easy craft and to be honest with you with my 4th of July decor I really usually like to do things that are fairly simple it's smack dad in the middle of summer I have a lot of activities going on so you know I love to decorate but some of these decor pieces need to be simple so here it is for you I ran out of my A's so I just use a V turned upside down that's a little trick with some of your letters and then I just cut a little extra strip here to complete it using the A now of course I have to go a little over the top you could totally leave it like this but I decided to take one of these Dollar Tree bows and add it to the base of it just to jazz it up and give it that little bit of extra sparkle and shine with my hot glue and hot glue gun I just added some glue to the back of the bow and the pieces that I trimmed off I decided to pop in and go in an upwards direction now as I was editing this I realized it'd be really cute you could make a little ring of florals around this to make kind of a centerpiece and elevate it on top of a book or a mantle or whatnot. I popped it in to my little dining room decor with those USA um, signs in the back and then I want to add a couple of little things maybe to either side of this. I think it is so fun and festive and it was literally took me about five minutes to put together which I absolutely love for a summertime decor craft. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I wanna create a super adorable 4th of July festive hat. So I'm taking this hat from Dollar Tree and this oversized bow from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna layer on another bow and this is gonna be a totally Dollar Tree craft. So super fun. Oh, whoops, except for this greenery. So I'm popping in some greenery on either side of the hat. Now the greenery did come from Michael's. It was in a garland and I love to cut it apart. So it gives me so much to work with. That's another little tip I have for you guys to get more bang for your buck. I decided also to add in some of these Dollar Tree roses to really fluff it out. And this would be super fun to do in place of a wreath on your front door or whatnot. The sky is the limit it, get creative and have so much fun with this. So I continue to add florals to either side. I'm adding in these beautiful white hydrangeas, some blue hydrangeas, and some more of those pretty florals. Here's what the finished product looks like and oh my goodness, I'm over the moon in love with this. I may even end up popping this out into my front yard bike, but it was way too hot today for me to go outside and do any decorating. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take this Americana Dollar Tree sign. I think it's an adorable sign, but I'm going to take my Waverly Wax in the antique color and my little Dollar Tree sponge brush, and I'm just going to give it a good antiquing. It's really going to give it that Americana vintage vibe that I'm going for with this display, and I just think it makes it look a little bit more chic and vintage. So you just continue to apply the wax over the entire project. Now I'm overlaying it on it to this wreath form and I was lucky to find one of these large bows at Dollar Tree It was actually the last one and a little tip with these bows 
clothes is to give them a good fluffing. Those little loops need to be fluffed out some. Now I'm taking some greenery and I'm popping some greenery onto either side of the wreath form and I do go back in later and wire it all down. I'm also adding in one of those cute little burlap bows and I'm taking bundles from Dollar Tree. They have these bundles of red, white, and blue roses that are perfect for 4th of July Americana decor, patriotic, and I'm adding them to either side. I didn't even clip them off their stems. They were just perfect just as they are, which I love. And then I added this little burlap Americana bow into the center and we are getting so festive. I'm adding some American flags to either side. Dollar Tree carries them three to a pack for $1, which is super great. They're so great and versatile to pop into vases or wreaths. And it's going to give you that USA Americana patriotic vibe on the cheap for sure. So here is how it turned out. I am going to leave this one inside because I just loved it so much. It's so festive and happy and really helps me celebrate the 4th of July and the Americana theme. Now I may move it around. I'm not for sure how I'm going to decorate yet my entire house for 4th of July or if I'm just going to add in pops here and there, but super fun and fabulous. And don't forget to wire everything down if you are going to be using this type of display piece outside. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take two of these stars um, garlands. And so they come three to a garland. And then I'm just going to take some of my Waverly wax in the antique color and this Dollar Tree sponge brush. And I'm just going to begin to gently sponge brush the wax in and around the tips of the star. So I want to leave a little bit of the sparkle and shine on the star. I think it's really super cute, but I did want to antique it and give it a little bit more of an aged look. And I'm going to go ahead and do that to all of the stars in this garland. Again, I really want it to appear a little bit more antiqued and festive. And I even thought about adding some bows, which I may go back in and do later, but I just knew that this garland would be perfect for my little dining room um, shelf for it to hang down. I even also might do one for my mantle if I decide Side to go Americana for my mantle. So here is what it looks like with that little bit of aged and distress. And I may even go back in with some white paint and give it even some more dimension. Now that I'm looking at it while I'm editing it and talking to you guys, I think that would be really cute to take some chalk paint and chalk paint in between and just really give it a ton of dimension. But so maybe some of these are a little bit of a work in progress. Comment and let me know if you guys are a work in progress and your crafts are as well. I feel like that's just a constant theme in my life and with my crafting projects. So here is what my finished garland looks like. I just hot glued those little two burlap pieces together and I am loving this. It is so festive over the top. Again, I may move some pieces around. It's a little bit bold <laughs> for my dining room on its own. And then the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm gonna create a Dollar Tree Deco mesh. I'm gonna be using three rolls of the red Dollar Tree Deco mesh and three rolls of the white Dollar Tree Deco mesh and then a roll of burlap fabric and it is from burlapfabric.com. I will leave a coupon code below and a link if y'all are interested and Walmart also sells burlap fabric. So I'm just cutting all of these pieces of mesh and fabric. They're about 10 to 12 inches. I'm just kind of eyeballing it because I'm not super precise on my measurements, but if you all wanted to, you could measure each piece. Now I'm taking and I'm gathering it up and creating this little ruffle in my hand. And I'm starting with the red and then I gather the white. And you could also use a chip clip if you need help holding these two pieces together while you gather your last piece. Now I'm just gathering the burlap fabric. So together you just kind of ruffle it up between your fingers. It doesn't have to be perfect. And once I have them all gathered together, I'm just 
putting them all in one piece and then I'm taking a pipe cleaner and I want to wrap the pipe cleaner around the entire bundle and then I'm going to twist the bundle in the back a couple of times. Try to get it as tight as you can. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect and then you can also kind of fan it out just a bit if you like. Now I am going to take this bundle and I'm going to go to the center part of my wreath and I'm going to just pipe cleaner this on. So you just take your pipe cleaner and you wire it on to the center part of that first rung. And for this wreath, I just use all of the center um, of the entire wreath. So I made four bundles for each section of the wreath. So this is sectioned off, I believe, into about five or six sections. And so you just continue to make your bundles. So you want to ruffle those pieces together. Again, I'm using red, white, and burlap. And I did alternate. A couple of them were just all white or a couple of them were all red. It's good also to make your bundles in advance. That'll kind of help speed up the process. Maybe put on a TV show because it does take a bit of time to make the bundles. So I'm just continuing to make more bundles and then I'm just tying them on with my pipe cleaner. And again, you guys, this does not have to be perfect. Deco mesh was always really scary for me, but the more I've tried it, the easier it's really gotten. <laughs> this is a really fun and easy one. Also, if you can't find Deco mesh at Dollar Tree, Walmart carries Deco mesh as well as the craft stores. So you're just going to continue to add more and more bundles. And then I'm taking these patriotic bows. I also found these. They were two to a pack at Dollar Tree. And and I'm wiring them on to the center part of the mesh with a pipe cleaner. So for this project, I used three rolls of red Dollar Tree mesh, three rolls of white Dollar Tree mesh. They're both six and a half inches wide and five yards long. And then I used one roll of the burlap ribbon and it was six and a half inches wide and 10 yards long. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, we're going to create a terry bow using the probe of the hand. So you're just going to take your wired ribbon and you're going to add a piece of wire to the base of your ribbon and tie it around your first loop here and then tie it around this peg. Now this is the terry bow. If you go to probo the hand YouTube channel or just type in terry bow, you'll find some really great detailed instructions. But you want to just take your ribbon and loop it up around that first peg. Now the pegs are what the probo the hand calls your fingers. So I did order this bow maker a couple of years ago. It's really great for me to use if I'm having problems with my hands, which I tend to have sometimes. Um, I'm not able to hold the really and make the really larger bows. So this one is great. So you can see I'm just adding in that first piece of wire and you're going to use the same piece of wire to continue to add each ribbon. And with the Terry bow, you can add add five to six ribbons. I believe this is very similar to the funky bow. So after you add your first two loops, you're just going to dovetail your ends and then you can add in your second ribbon. So you can see I'm just adding in the second ribbon. I'm using that same piece of wire. I just twist mine on and then I loop it around the top part of the bow maker. And again, those little pegs are what they call the fingers. And so you just tie it on again with some more wire you loop it up again and down and then you tie it on again with some more wire and the goal is to kind of keep your base wire that base bottom peg if this is making sense is what um, holds the entire bow and you're just going to continue on with that process again i'll link all my bow tutorials down below if you guys need an easier bow or a more detailed instruction but once you have your terry bow all finished up or whatever bow you choose you can give it a really really good fluffing and this is the secret to my bows is lots and lots of fluffing so i'm continuing to fluff this bow and then i couldn't resist and adding another bow dollar tree makes these great burlap already pre-made bows if you guys don't don't want to try to make a bow, just add one of those bows. They're super easy, super simple, and they're only a dollar. Now I'm adding in some of that Dollar Tree raffia just to give this some texture and to give it a little bit more of a rustic chic 
look. I did add another patriotic bow off to the left and then I'm using some of those Dollar Tree, I believe these are spider plants, and I just clipped off a couple of the little spider plants. I did have a bundle of tulips. I added a couple of tulips and then I loved this. This was one of those Dollar Tree plant stakes and I just took it off the plant stake and added the little In God We Trust heart. I just hot glued that onto the wreath and then added just a couple of more florals in and around there. And that deco mesh really saves the day with an outdoor wreath that you want to last for a month or so. You don't have to spend much on it and it really looks really heightened and chic without breaking the bank. So I'm loving this. I thought it came out super festive. Patriotic bunting was on the Pottery Barn website for between $50 and $100 and we're going to do it on a teeny tiny budget. So I'm just taking this Dollar Tree bunting and a pizza box and I'm going to trace out the bunting but I'm going to make it a little bit larger than the pizza box because I want to take a piece of fabric and line the bunting with some fabric to give it a little bit more stability and to class it up just a bit. And now I'm just tracing around the piece of cardboard and then I'm going to cut out the piece of fabric. Now I wasn't completely precise on all of this but I did want to have a little bit of a rustic chic patriotic look. The other thing I did was I found this long old curtain rod in my garage and I'm repurposing it for my front porch. So you can see I'm just marking off on each end how big the width of the curtain rod is and I'm going to create this with a hot glue gun. You guys know me and so I'm just going to hot glue a little tab at the top of my fabric and that's going to slide on to my repurposed curtain rod for my front per porch patriotic bunting. So I just hot glued one long strip all along this fabric and then I'm pressing it down. Again that's creating that tab. Now, even though the Pottery Barn bunting was adorable, I had to give this a super extra touch. You all know me. I had to go in with some lace. I repurposed this lace from an old tablecloth and I cut it out the same size as my striped fabric. And then you can see I'm just folding it over and then I'm going to hot glue it. Again, you guys can be really precise with this, but I wanted it to have that shabby chic look. So I didn't want it to be completely perfect. And also, so I'm pretty impatient with my projects. So you can see I'm just cutting off the excess lace. Again, the entire bunting is going to fit onto the curtain rod with that first striped tab that we created. Now, Mr. Romantic helped me figure out that if I took the top layer of the bunting and just hot glued it over, that would get rid of those tabs. I didn't really care for those tabs. Now, if you guys are okay with them, that's great. Um, but I wanted to kind of conceal them and and give it a little bit more of a classy approach. Plus, I didn't need the little tab grommets. So I went ahead and lined this up and then I'm hot gluing it again to the top of this. And then I'm going to add this and cross my fingers. This all stays in one piece on my front porch <laughs> all the way to the 4th of July. It does get pretty hot where I live, but where I'm hanging this is going to be underneath the covered part of my front porch. And I enlisted Mr. Romantic to help with this part. Babe, that looks really good. Yes. Thank you, babe. <laughs> So here is the finished product. I am so in love with this. I've always dreamed of having one of these buntings across my front porch. I just never knew how to go about hanging one and repurposing this old curtain rod was the perfect solution. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to share with you how to make a beautiful blooming floral using one of the Dollar Tree wine buckets. Okay, so this is so easy. All you guys have to do is grab a Dollar Tree wine bucket and pop some foam inside of it and then like some little rocks and then I'm taking some Dollar Tree greenery and you want to cut the greenery at the stem and so I have some of the leafy leafy greeny greenery from Dollar Tree and then also some of this kind of like spiny um, it almost looks a li little bit like a eucalyptus greenery I'm not for sure it just says greenery on the tag but anyway 
I'm going to alternate the fluffy greenery with the smaller greenery and you want to bunch them really close together. So I was watching a floral designer over the weekend and I saw how he was doing a fresh flower arrangement and he was using a ton of greenery and it turned out beautifully. Now he was doing a bouquet of roses, but I thought we could try doing something using Dollar Tree supplies and doing something more summer themed. So I ended up loving how this turned out. But the key is what he said, and is what I'm gonna pass along to you guys, is to do all of your greenery around the base and make it really, really nice and full. And then you can just choose a couple of really beautiful select flowers to put in the center. And so really get it really nice and full. So for this wine bucket, I'm using four bundles total of this greenery. So two of the big stem leafy and then two of the little eucalyptus and I did cut them. Usually I'm kind of lazy with my arrangements and I just pop greenery in you know on the stem but I will tell you guys I feel like cutting the greenery just made such a huge improvement and difference in how it looked. It was a little bit more time consuming but I will tell you it was kind of therapeutic and I think my next goal um, for one of my upcoming floral arrangements would be to do something with fresh flowers. I've never really tried a flesh, fresh flower arrangement. Anyway, I'm continuing to add some greenery. And then for this one, I wanted to make this a very versatile arrangement. So in my mind, I thought, let's do something that can go through the summer. I chose a summer white, this white hydrangea, and this is actually one of the Michaels, <laughs> um, clearance Christmas flowers. So believe it or not, it has a tiny bit of like glittery snow on the ends, but you really can't see it at all. I promise you. That's a little tip that I shared with you guys a couple months ago is to shop the craft stores on their clearance time. Now these were some Valentine's Day roses that I had left over. I just trimmed them off their stem and then I'm popping four of these in and then I use four of the hydrangea bundles. And check this out. I feel like it came out really nice. I've never been professionally trained in flower arranging but I feel like it looks pretty darn sweet I popped in some Dolly Tree American flags into this and I'm gonna display this on my front porch it's gonna honor Memorial Day 4th of July and I just think it feels and looks really festive and then once those holidays are over and we get into you know the end of July September months I can remove some of the summer flowers and add in something like some sunflowers that are going to begin to transition to fall so I'm always thinking about how we can get a little bit more bang for our buck with our floor Florals. Comment and let me know what you guys think about this. Are you going to be decorating it for um, any kind of holiday in the next upcoming month or so? If so, 4th of July. Um, do you love to do sunflowers for summer? I love to hear how you all are brightening up your spaces, whether it be your front porch, back porch, or even inside your home. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take one of these sparkling hats and this pretty red check ribbon. I'm going to wrap it around the hat and then just tie it off. Now, if you guys see these hats in your Dollar Tree, grab a couple of extras for only a dollar. We can use these during the holidays, during Christmas time. So just a little quick tip. I saw them and instantly I thought of Frosty the Snowman. But for the 4th of July, for our patriotic celebration, I am gonna do a beautiful little 4th of July centerpiece. And so I'm just gonna take and I'm going to dovetail the ends of my ribbon to give it that nice boutique finish. Now you guys could customize this to suit whatever type of home decor. Maybe you're not decorating for 4th of July, but you're decorating for lemons or shabby chic. Paint this hat, give it a paint job and your favorite ribbon and make it your own. Um, now I'm adding some floral foam and so I'm just hot gluing that floral foam on to the base of the hat. Then I'm going to take some greenery and pop some greenery in. Now I decided to make a loopy bow. This I'm going to show you guys a bow without using a bow maker. So you're just going to take your ribbon and pull it out and I've got all the ribbons together. This is kind of what I call a sloppy bow. So I'm just going to add the ribbon and then I've got it pinched and then you're just going to pinch it again. So you're going to create another loop and pinch it again. And the loops don't have to match. They don't have to be perfect. This is 
is a great way to reuse scrap ribbon as well. I'm gonna take a pipe cleaner and I'm just going to tie it off and that's gonna secure everything together. And once you have that done, you can dovetail your ends. Now I'm taking this 4th of July sign. I love the Dollar Tree signs that have several different signs in them. Just a quick note, if you're a crafter and you sell your items, these are great to buy to break apart, which you guys may already know that. Okay, so I chose Home of the Brave. I really feel like the men and women that serve our country are so brave. And everybody, you know, I just want to pray for everybody out there right now. Pray for America. Um, I did that while I was doing these DIYs, actually. But anyway, so I'm just going to take some of this Dollar Tree um, florals, and I'm going to pop in some pretty red, white, and blue florals. They sell these little roses and little red flowers, just to pop it in here and make it extra festive and pretty, and just this really pretty centerpiece. Now, you can see I'm kind of accidentally covering up Brave, but I do pull that out and make it to where you can see it a little bit better at the very end. So just continue to add really pretty florals. And again, if you're customizing this for a different holiday or a different look, just go for it. Add tons of florals, make the centerpiece gorgeous and make it your own. Use whatever colors suit your fancy to celebrate your home decor. So now that I have that finished, I'm going to take this little Dollar Tree tag and some of this check ribbon, and I want to create a pretty little heart to kind of accent it and give it that designer boutique finish. So when you think of a designer items, they always do like a really pretty floral and bow, but then they add something surprising that you wouldn't think to add into a wreath. So think outside the box and add some glam jewels or just some different accents and touches. Really get creative. So I'm going to glue this on to to the front of the heart. I think home of the brave and this heart just signifies the heart of the America, all the brave men and women. So, so thankful and just praying for everyone in America, praying for America. And so then once I have that done, I do want to just go ahead and give it a little bit more of an accent. So a quick little tip for you, if you don't have a lot of a really pretty, more expensive ribbon, just cut a little small piece and pop that in and that will still give you kind of that accent color without having to go over the top so use something that you have more of generously and then sparingly for that nicer high-end ribbon so now I'm taking these beautiful jewels again I get all of my jewels at totallydazzle.com I'll leave the link below for you guys but their jewels are so cheap if you love to craft and give things a glam touch like I do you guys are gonna love their stuff and Natalie is super super sweet so just pop some jewels in. I popped one in by my heart and then up by the home of the brave and that just gave it that extra special sparkle and shine that I love just to doll it up dress it up and make it a little bit more fancy now for the next Dollar Tree DIY I'm taking some of the roses that I picked out of my garden and I'm just adding two of the foam wands they come four to a pack from Dollar Tree and what I love about them is they have a plastic wand so you can stick them in your fresh flower arrangements and I really think it's fun to even stick little fourth of July goodies, flags, a foam wand into some of your pink shabby chic girly flowers and then I just tied this cute little handkerchief that I found at Dollar Tree off to the side to give it again that bit of rustic chic patriotic but then also bringing in my favorite shabby chic flowers. For the next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm using one of those Dollar Tree sun hats and then a leftover patriotic bow and some of that leftover raffia. And this is such an easy, fun DIY that you can add to your porch decor. I had my little garden bike in mind. But anyway, I'm just tying that little raffia around the little patriotic part of this bow. And then I'm just using the original ribbon that was on this sun hat and I'm tying my patriotic bow on. You could get really fancy with this but because I'm going to do a fancy floral in my bike basket I wanted something a little bit more simple to hang on the front part of the bike. I think this came out so perfect. I know you all thought that the sun hat looked cute and I may go ahead and buy one for myself to wear but it did come out cute in my garden bike decor. Now for the next Dollar Tree DIY I'm just taking some popsicle sticks and I'm hot gluing them to the back of this large Dollar Tree sign. It says God bless America. It's a little bright and sparkly, but you know what? Fourth of July is bright and sparkly and so am I. <laughs> so I'm just creating a little floral planter. I'm using one of those Dollar Tree floral planters that I chalk painted white. 
and I kind of just stressed the front. And I added the God Bless America sign and some spider plants left over from my wreath. And then Dollar Tree sells these American flags. They come three to a pack and they're great to add to your floral arrangements. And it's even fun to use just the flags if you don't want to redo a whole new floral. Of course, you know me, I love to go with tons of florals for each holiday. So now I'm just adding in some of those Dollar Tree blue hydrangeas. And then I'm adding in a couple of those Dollar Tree red tulips. I really want to make this red, white, and blue with a little bit more of a classy touch to it. So I felt like the tulips and the hydrangeas, I believe I got a couple of little white flowers. And then I love these spider plants. Again, these are from Dollar Tree as well. They give a lot of dimension to your floral arrangement and then also I had some of those Dollar Tree red roses left over from Valentine's Day I was really excited to use these because they look so real so I just popped a couple of those in the back because they were a little bit taller and then I had a little bit of stray greenery that was in my craft stash. If you guys need some craft organizing ideas, I did do a craft organization video. It really helped me know actually what I have <laughs> before I started decorating. And so I just popped this into my little bike basket. Again, this could sit at an entryway table. And I did add a little patriotic bow with some raffia to the front part of that arrangement as well. I think this came for the next Dolly Tree DIY. I'm going to take this Dolly Tree USA sign and I had taken some antique wax and antiqued it with just the Waverly wax you get it at Walmart it's in the antique color and I'm going to take this painters tape and I'm going to begin to trace out the checkerboard pattern on this side of the sign if you guys can see on the other side of the sign I went ahead and did one side for you so I knew how to do it and also so you guys could kind of know what we're going to be doing but you're just going to run a line down the center where your stars are and then you're going to use your tape and mark out um, the checkerboard pattern and we're going to paint it again in that Royal Check Mackenzie Child's high-end designer on a budget for us um, way so I'm just taking now and I'm going to go every other one so I'm taking that royal blue paint and this is just blue paint from Arteza Craft Company now it did need a little bit more of a navy undertone to totally match the McKenzie Child's blue but this is what I had on hand and so this is what we're going to use so I'm just going to go ahead and paint my checks on here every other one and I did switch to a smaller paintbrush because this is a smaller project so hopefully that helps and also dabbing your paint in water also helps. Now I did decide to run um, a piece of tape down this side. That way it had a little bit more of a guide and I wouldn't have so many oopsies. I do have neuropathy in my hands and feet. So sometimes my hands can be a little bit shaky or not as accurate as I would hope for. Um, but again, with this hand painted look, there's so much grace because it's supposed to look hand painted. There's supposed to be imperfections. It's not going to look perfect um, like it was, you know, Know, made in a factory you're making this yourself um, or you know repainting it yourself I guess is what you would say I think these Dollar Tree signs are absolutely adorable um, and just dazzling them up and kind of making them suit your fancy and also um, I'm going to now with some white paint because I do well, do want to do those white and blue and I did do two coats of the white paint and then I did another coat over the blue paint with some extra white paint
Now I'm taking that white paint and I'm just dabbing it over the original blue paint. So I'm just using a little bit of white and blue kind of mixed together because I want to tone down the darkness of the blue and kind of give it that really pretty hand painted look. Mackenzie Childs does what they call a royal courtly check and I love it for summer. I think it's so gorgeous and um, I just thought it would be fun to customize some of these Dollar Tree signs and these are so fun and fabulous and you guys can have this look for next to nothing. So now I'm going in with some of this gold Arteza paint. I do love the Arteza paints but you guys can really use any nice acrylic paint. Walmart even has it um, with the Apple Barrel Craft paint. It's like 50 cents for a little um, two of it and Dollar Tree I notice is even carrying paints. I picked some up this week and I'm going to try some out and see what I think about it. So here it is after I added the gold accents and I am loving it. I was able to customize it and make it look like the little plants. For this next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to take several of the Dollar Tree Lays. So I grabbed four bundles of Lays, and so in each bundle, there's three Lays. So what I'm going to do is just take this little Dollar Tree Styrofoam frame and some zip ties, and I'm just going to zip tie this Lay to the frame. So I zip tied it on each end, then trimmed off the zip tie, and I tried to keep the zip ties all on one side, like the little bumpy end. That way you guys can't see it, or my guests that come to my front door can't see it. So again, I'm zip tying this next lay on here and you're just going to continue on with this process. So you can either zip tie the the zip tie around the lay part or you can try to string it through. I tried it both ways and it seemed to work pretty good both ways. Um, the other idea for a wreath like this is to completely remove each lay and just hot glue them to the base of the wreath. Now I did that last summer, so you guys can always go back and check out my huge summer videos from last year, but I wanted to give you guys a different spin on how you can do a summer lay wreath. And Dollar Tree will carry lays in different colors. They have some beautiful pastel colors that will be coming out for midsummer, but I thought this would be really fun and fabulous for a 4th of July wreath, just something really neat. And the other idea for this is this would make a great Great little centerpiece so you could build like an arrangement a floral arrangement in the center of this pop this onto a little outdoor summer garden party table um, and you'd be good to go so there's two ways really that you could use this one as a wreath and then one as like a little centerpiece and comment down below if you guys have any other ideas for how you could use this but I thought especially if you're crunched for time and you don't want to get out your glue gun and you just want to make a really quick little simple wreath I thought this was a pretty fantastic idea again pop on a show grab some zip ties now I will tell you that the Dollar Tree lays shed if you guys can see very closely on my crafting table they shed a lot so you may want to put down you know a piece of plastic or whatnot if you're working in a space that you don't want to get a bunch um of little threads on I guess they what they were now I'm taking some of these pre-made patriotic bows these are one of my favorite things to grab at the Dollar Tree for the 4th of July and I'm just gonna zip tie the patriotic bow on to my little lay here and that's going to keep it on really nice and sturdy and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of ribbon and tie that over the zip tied part so you don't see the zip tie we want to make our work look as seamless as possible um, and another thing is that I was thinking is be really cute to jazz it up with a jewel in the center. Now, if you were doing something like this for Memorial Day and you're going to be placing this um, for a loved one, um, I was thinking you could use a special brooch or badge or whatnot right here in the center, I think would be really nice to honor somebody um, that you care for. So here's how it turned out. I will be displaying this by my front door. Um, and I hope to actually make some more. It was really fun and easy. I actually too thought about putting it on my little front garden bike. Let me know you guys, should we put it by the front door or my garden bike? It's pretty cute. <laughs> why I want to share with you all how to create a tobacco basket for an Americana 4th of July patriotic holiday. So I'm taking this tobacco basket that I found at Dollar General. You can find them pretty much at any craft store. And then this America sign that I found at Dollar Tree. And then just a piece of floral foam. And I'm going to hot glue that floral foam to the base of the basket. Then I'm going to take some greenery. You can find greenery really at any craft store. I think I found this one maybe at Walmart. 
and I'm going to pop that greenery in. And you want to also hold on to that foam and make sure it hot glues onto there really well. And so just continue to pop in some greenery. And then I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree white hydrangeas and pop those into either side. I love to do a tobacco basket. Um, it's just something that's a little bit different for than a wreath and you can set it on top of things, which is super fun. Um, and now I'm taking some of those blue Dollar Tree hydrangeas and then here's those red roses that we made in kind of that Mackenzie Child's fashion with the Mackenzie Child's dupe ribbon. I'm popping those onto either side. And then now comes the super fun part. I'm gonna take this easy bow maker. You can buy these at the craft stores or online. And I'm just gonna use some of this red check ribbon. I found the red check ribbon actually on Amazon. I'll link some down below for you guys. I'll link my Amazon store with all my crafting supplies. So I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna measure out five inch loops on either side. And I will tell you that this easy bow maker really and truly is easy. Now, if you don't have an easy bow maker, that's okay. I have a huge bow video for you linked down below where you guys don't have to have an easy bow maker. You can make the Olivia bow. It's also a beautiful bow. I've just got this new tool, so I'm like a kid at a candy shop and I wanna play with it. It's just like a new crafting toy. Okay, so now I'm taking some Dollar Tree burlap lace ribbon. I wanna do red, white, and blue. I didn't have white ribbon, but I did have this Dollar Tree ribbon and I always try to use wired ribbon. And again, I'm measuring five inches on each side of my ribbon. Now I'm going in with this blue check ribbon. I found it on Amazon. I'll link my Amazon store down below for you guys. And I'm again measuring five inches on each side so the loops will be five inches and the tails will be five inches don't forget to dovetail those ends and cut that pretty boutique triangle in it now i'm taking some of that faux mackenzie child's ribbon dovetail those ends give it a boutique finish and i'm going to do this loop a little bit smaller so four inches across on either side the easy bow maker does have the measuring um, tool already on there which i absolutely love but again you can make this super easy no problem by hand. Um, my hands, I've been doing so much painting that this bow maker though is definitely helping me. Okay, so I'm also gonna take the pipe cleaner and just twist it together and that's gonna keep my bow nice and tight together. Now, I will tell you that the secret to my bows and really any bow is fluffing. That wired ribbon really needs to be pulled and fluffed and just play with it and mess with it until you get it absolutely how you want it. And that's really gonna be the key to making a fabulous, gorgeous bow. Now you're gonna find the center part of your tobacco basket and I like to take just a floral stem off of a floral bend it um, down and then pop that into my piece of floral foam you may want to hot glue it to really get it to stay if it's going to be on a door but mine's just going to be sitting on my dining room shelf and that's all there is to it very few florals involved some ribboning yes and then a pretty sign to your tobacco basket and you're set to go with this fabulous amazing creation this would definitely be very expensive in a store and it's boutique gorgeous on a budget. You guys can totally do this one. Dollar Tree DIY. I want to take these USA Dollar Tree signs and some Waverly wax. It's in the antique wax color and I'm just using this Dollar Tree sponge brush and I'm going to gently apply wax all over the entire sign and this is going to make this super adorable Dollar Tree sign just appear very vintage and aged. I noticed when I went to the craft stores the other day that the Americana patriotic decor had this really cool kind of patina to it and so I actually really love these Dollar Tree large tag signs but I wanted to just make them appear more aged and have that really cool vintage Americana vibe. Here is the final look. I popped them onto the shelf that's in my dining room, mixed in with my Mackenzie Child teapot, and I think they look fabulous. Again, I think they're super adorable, but adding that wax just gives them a little bit more vintage flair and it makes them appear more aged. 
and I couldn't resist throwing in a cute little clip of our Benji bear. He is just exploring some of the flower beds at one of the resorts that's close to our house where I live. So as always, please let me know what was your favorite DIY in this video and which one you'll will you be recreating. I'm also hosting a Cricut Joy giveaway and the secret question you're going to comment down below to have a chance to enter is if you had a thousand dollar shopping spree where would you go shopping and what would you buy? I love y'all. So thank you all so much for joining me on another fun and fabulous crafty decor adventure. It is a true blessing and honor to have you all here. Listen, if you all are new, welcome. I'm Olivia with Olivia's Romantic Home, and I love to share with you all how you can make your home's boutique gorgeous on a budget. And for everybody that comes back and loves on me and enjoys crafting and decorating and just being a part of my community, I want to truly thank you because you all help me so much. And um, I'm just th so thankful to have a space where I can do what I love and share that with you. And I know a lot of you all say that um, it inspires you to craft and decorate. I know some people have started businesses from their inspirations and some people just enjoy watching my videos because it helps them feel calm and relaxed and your comments help me too. So I just wanna encourage you all to keep up the good work on the crafting and decor decorating journey. I know everybody's at a different space in that journey, as well as keep up the good work, looking forward to the future with joy. I encourage you to do your best to put one foot in front of the other. Um, every day is a new day and every day is a new chance for us to um, just do a little bit better in this world. So anyway, thank you for the kind comments. Light up my comment section with happy emojis, with kind comments to one another, and um, just do your best to stay joyful. Okay, also, I want to remind you guys that I am doing a Cricut Joy giveaway, um, and I, it's a new little Cricut tool. It's great, I have one, and so I wanted to bless one of you all with it. All you guys have to do to enter that giveaway is to drop a comment down below and let me know that secret question. So I leave a secret question in the video and it's just a way also for us all to engage with one another. So that's super fun as well. Now listen, I wanna wish you all a happy Memorial Day weekend um, and just know that I'm praying for you all and that you guys just keep looking forward to the future with joy. Um, also pop over to my Facebook page if you wanna connect with other crafty folks um, and share photos of your home decor and your DIY projects. That's a, just a fun little social place. It's totally free to join. I just created it for you guys to connect with each other and support one another in your crafting and decorating. And I know a lot of you all have made friends and you share so many ideas and it's a rather large group as well. So I do see all of your posts. I don't always get a chance to comment, but I just want to compliment you all for all of the beautiful work that you do. Um, also, I have an Elizabeth Myth Come Instagram page. You guys can connect with me over there. I love to share a good morning cup of coffee with you all every morning on my Instagram story. Um, I'm a morning person, coffee, and my prayer card is my favorite way to start the day. I encourage you guys to pick up some of those prayer cards. They're at Dollar Tree, and they just have really encouraging, you know, scripture or just reminders, and I really need that for myself, so I know a lot of you all um, have enjoyed those. I've been trying to also post those good morning prayers and coffee on my Facebook story and my YouTube story as well, and the story is just like the little... Um, profile picture that'll have a round circle and that means that I posted something on that story. Also, I know you all love seeing Benji Bear, so thank you guys for all the love on Benji Bear and um, you know, I'm just praying for y'all and I love y'all. Listen, I'm going to get let you get back to your day. I hope you had fun with this crafting video. I can't wait for our next video. I have a lot of fun things coming up for the future and until then, remember, be kind to yourselves and be kind to one another and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.